Hi, so I don't really have a garden. Um, I have a few pots that my landlord allows me to put around, but not much else. So I thought I'd come here today, this beautiful woods just on his land by where I live, to talk to you about magical herbs. So it's just an introduction about the, the magical use of herbs. Herbs have obviously been around for absolutely centuries. I used to go out foraging a huge amount for different things to use in my magic. Um, for my cooking as well. To me that's just as magical. But these days I can't do that so much. But I can tell you about what I did. So it's just an introduction to herbs and lore and magical uses. The tools that are used, collection of herbs, and what they can be used for. Bearing in mind I'm no expert, I've no qualifications, this is just about what I've learnt, what I've read, what I've researched. So when I started doing this there was no real internet, internet was quite scarce, so it was all about going to the library and researching what you'd found maybe taking a cutting with you to be able to identify it. These days obviously it's much easier, you've got your phone with your internet and all sorts of things to help. To me magical uses are spells, whether they be cursing or healing etc. Or use in rituals, whether seasonal or for other reasons, births, deaths, namings, whatever else, but also about ointments, um, oils, um, decoctions, infusions, relieving pain and obviously restorative cooking or cooking with friends. That can be just as restorative. So when I'm doing something magical with herbs I have specific tools that I use for when I cut them. As I say, I don't get out to cut them as often as I used to, which is sad, but I still have a lot of the tools that I've always used. So I have a knife, a wand, pestle and mortar, a non-metallic heat resistant pot, an incense burner. I used to have a dip pen, so one that you dip into to the ink. Sadly, uh, for whatever reason, I lost it. So now I do use a fountain pen, so it does have a cartridge. But it is dedicated to my magical work. A journal, needles and some cotton thread, things like that. And then other supplies that might be needed are candles, spring water, oil, preferably something pure like virgin olive oil. I tend to ensure it's organic and salt water. So my knife is dedicated to my magic. Traditionally it has a steel blade and a wooden handle. It's great if you can make your own, I was never that clever so I did buy mine. But I ensured when I bought it, it was brand new, it had never ever been used for anything else, ever. And I didn't haggle over the price. So I took it and I dedicated it. I've wrapped it in linen, it's always been kept in linen until it was dedicated and in between uses. Dedicated it under the full moon just after sunset and I incorporated earth, fire and water and obviously therefore air in my dedication. My wand now that's changed over the years for various reasons. Maybe it's broken or I wanted something different. It's changed with how I felt. But it's always whatever wand I've used, it's been dedicated. It's been cut by my dedicated knife. And it is specifically only for my herbal magic always taken it from a living tree, I've always asked permission first and thanked it afterwards. 
and the cutting and construction has always been done so sanding removing bark etc during a waxing moon at night now there are general purpose woods that you can use so hazel and elder are great for general purpose for, so for any any kind of herbal magic or you can be specific as to the wood that you want for me it's it's specifically about what feels right for me although obviously you can obviously research and find out what's the one what i consider to be herbal magic is as i said spells and rituals creating candles i've made candles and put herbs into them for when friends have had to go through cesarean for example for the birth of their child because they have medical issues that they it would be too risky to give birth naturally so they've had a planned cesarean for for people's death creating candles and putting herbs in there for their death or for burning herbs during their death herbs for anointing them afterwards making the oils to anoint them if I've done it myself making a scrying mirror maybe adding some rosemary or sage for clear and far sight incense incense is a very magical thing to use whether it's for some people they just use it to, to make their room smell nice, other people use it more specifically for magical purposes when they're creating magic. Herbs in death. So obviously as I said you can, you can um, have herbs for cleansing afterwards whether that's adding the herbs to the water or adding an oil that's been made from the herbs to the water to then cleanse them. Might have, if you're doing a ritual for their death, it may be having some, some herbs bound. So I might use some, some yew and some lavender and some rosemary, but also be burning as well as um, cleansing them with something like um, rosemary, sorry, sage, myrrh and frankincense. Rosemary has been used from time to time but not very often. So herbs in healing, there's infusions, there's oils, touched on, poultices, decoctions, ointments, syrups, Obviously cooking we've mentioned as well. Food, herbs in food is, heal, is healing. It can reduce symptoms. I use it a lot for my pain. I add specific herbs and things because I know that it will help with my pain control. I use herbs in my dog's food for his epilepsy and to counteract some of the pharmaceutical use pharmaceutical side effects that he has from those drugs obviously if you're mixing anything together a lot of research needs to be done to to ensure that there are no contraindications no potential side effects I use herbs for my horse he's got arthritis now he's old um, and he has laminitis so I use herbs for him and I tend to cut those herbs for myself. So intent is a really important thing and probably the most important thing if you're creating something for magic. Ensure that it's not about vanity. And time has no meaning when working with herbs in a magical sense. You're not worrying about how long it's going to take. So for me, I don't wear any timepieces. I don't have a clock or a watch or a phone handy. So it just takes as long as it takes. And I tend to do it at night because then I'm less likely to get interruptions and I can take as long as I like. Traditionally, 
herbal magic would be done out in the woods or the forest. As I say, there's this beautiful wood here that I'm sat in right now and you might be able to hear the birds singing to me as I'm talking, which is fantastic. But this wood doesn't belong to me, so creating a fire and making magic here wouldn't be right because it's not mine and my landlord wouldn't like it. So I have to take it inside. So I use my kitchen table, but I dedicate that table. And I bring in some of the herb that I have outside, so it's nice and fresh, and put it on my dedicated table. I create a little altar on that table. So I might bring in some rosemary because I can easily grow rosemary in my pots. And it means that I'm bringing something in from the outside for my magic. I do ensure, because we only have electric where I am, that because my fire is also too small for me to hang a pot over to, to do it, anything, I have a camping gas stove that I use that, for my dedicated herbal magic. So again, I'm using that element of fire rather than just an electric ring, which is not quite the same, to me at least. I always have some candles. They might be a relevant colour to the work that I'm doing. Can obviously go as far as the right day, the right time, planetary meanings, hours, of particular intent. But to me, it's mainly um, about my intent, what feels right to me, when it feels right to me. As I say, I like to do things at night. Traditionally, to do favourable magic, it's on a waxing moon, such as fertility, love, protection, prosperity and good health. Or for a waning moon is more destructive magic, banishing curses, hexes, removing ills or disease. Now for some, going as traditional as being sky clad brings purity, honesty and a sense of mortality. Be close to those primal forces whilst you're working with these herbs. Now obviously you can go as far as doing that when you're actually cutting the herbs with your dedicated knife. But for me at least, not having a garden and it being rather public, that probably wouldn't work. For some, they go as far as the heartbeat. So missing a heartbeat before putting the next thing in. Getting into a meditative or trance hypnotic state can be really um, help with that concentration and conviction of what you're doing. Maybe an incantation or rune if it feels right for you, if that's how you work. Everyone is individual and that's okay. As I say, I used to love going foraging for herbs, but sadly I can't do this anymore. So I do have to end buy stuff online um, and have it delivered, which is um, already dried by somebody else and not picked in the same way as I would. So I then dedicate it. But if I was going out foraging still, and what I used to do when I did go out foraging, and what I do do when I pick the herbs, cut the herbs that I have got access to in my few pots, is that I pick them and collect them at certain times. So to ensure that the best preservation of the plant, the virtue of it, and to ensure the best outcome of mind, body, soul, and the magic is about working in the phases of the moon to enhance that energy. So for picking or cutting above ground, so for the leaves, the stalks, whatever it is, late morning before midday, so before the the midday sun hits is the best time of day and if possible the day before a full moon. 
always asking and thanking the plant never taking the whole plant so it may recover and restore if you're taking seeds then never taking all the seeds but scattering some of those seeds so that they can rejuvenate once again if you're digging up roots early morning or late evening is best and where possible at the dark of the moon see the greatest energy of that root and again always asking and thanking but also just as the plant is about to turn over so for example just as a dandelion is the flowers about to, to start wilting is the best time to gather the root but if you're taking the root always ensure that you cut a bit off and replant it so that it can then regrow rejuvenate And after a thunderstorm is always a great time for the best abundance of char charged energy. So obviously we can't always have fresh herbs for our magic because for me, I, I can't go and collect them or for the fact that they're not around at certain times of the year. In the winter it's not so easy to access so if you're going to store them it's always best to pick them cut them when they're as dry as possible free of moisture so not just after it's been raining and then fasten them together as tightly as possible and hang them in a dry place until they're completely dry and then crush them and place them in a sealed jar and store away from sunlight. So ways of administering these herbs. There's infusions, which is simply a tea. So it's a leaf, for example. It's three teaspoons or a fresh handful in a non-metallic pot. Pour boiling water over and allow to steep. And this can be used hot or cold decoctions which are root sparks or hard seeds again roughly three teaspoons of dried or a handful of fresh if dried it's helpful to soak them overnight to get the best results before you actually use them place in cold water and bring to the boil for about 15 minutes simmer and then strain and use hot or cold you can make syrups as well, half a pound of honey, roughly a pint of herbal infusion or decoction. Bring it to the boil in a non-metallic pan. Again, mine is, is dedicated to this use. Simmer over a low heat until it thickens and administer a dessert spoonful three times a day. Obviously, if you're going to do any of this, then ensure that you research exactly what, the, what it's you're using it for and how it's going to work and whether it's going to counteract anything else that you might be taking pharmaceutically from your doctor, chemist or anywhere else. There are oils, ointments, poultices. There are all sorts of ways that you can use herbs from your garden or from foraging. The thing that's important is your intent whether you're creating a spell, whether you're using it for healing, whether you're even beginning just to cut it and use it for cooking. If you think that you're wanting to do it magically, then the intent is really important. But also the thing to do is enjoy it. Know what you're picking. So ensure that you've either done your research or you have someone with you that knows and ensure that you always do it safely. But using herbs for magic is fantastic, I think. It's taken a long time to know what I know. So research is really important. But it's a good way of getting out in nature, finding out about what's there, and learning, enjoying, being outside in nature, having a go at growing some herbs for yourself if you have a small area 
to grow. So enjoy. And I'm now going to enjoy this beautiful woods for a little bit longer. <laughs>